And so we have to understand that even coming in, the damage that's been done over the last three and a half years that has, I would submit, disproportionately impacted communities of color and black communities in particular, because when we talk about seniors not getting the services that they need and cuts to the community care program, when we talk about um, you know, the fact that you know, cuts to ch uh, child care assistance program so that parents who are low income can work and go to school and do whatever they need so that they can have child care assistance for their children. When we look at all the things that have been cut in communities, violence prevention programs, after school programs, all of those things and the social service safety net which has been devastated under this governor's failed leadership. And now, coming in, it doesn't mean that everything bounces back. You know, it's not that because we passed a budget, and you know, I'm down in Springfield, and I see that Governor Rauner is not trying to figure out solutions for our state and for our communities. So this, this requires someone with a vision. And one of the things that I do know is that JB has a vision that has not just become something that's sort of in his head, but is now concrete plans that we have introduced. Plans for health care, plans for veterans, plans for criminal justice reform, you know, plans for edu early childhood <coughs> education, and all of these things, job creation, all of these things that are necessary, and that's what we need. We have not had that in our state. We haven't had someone who's come in and said, here are my plans to make sure that we get communities back on track. And in fact, we've had a governor that's done everything to, to hurt and harm and devastate our community. So this is, going to re this is going to be a heavy lift, and it's going to require somebody who is visionary, someone who has done big things throughout his career, which <coughs> he has done. And it's going to require somebody who um, has some actual plans to execute from day one. And, and that's what we intend to bring to this, this role. So let's rewind. Under the current administration, You've made some valid points with the budget stalemate really uh, affecting the social programs. Um, and it has taken a major toll on agencies that had to close, on um, independent daycare providers that basically there was their only resource of income, um, layoffs. But prior to Ronner uh, taking that seat, there were still some issues, mm -hmm. lack of African-American firms having procurement opportunities. Uh, property assessment uh, taxes were still at a height. Um, under the leadership of Speaker Madigan, what is going to change between your relationship and his and how he interacted with uh, the previous governor before Ronner, Patrick Quinn, and how he's going, how he reacted to Blagojevich. What is going to change with your relationship with a majority Democratic House leader in making these changes on the legislative side? Yes. So to 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 be clear, um, I, I want to you know just for everybody in the room and all those who may be looking, you know, um, we don't get to choose who the Speaker of the House is. You know, those of us who are running for governor and lieutenant governor, we don't get to choose. It gets chosen by people in the House and in the Senate for the Senate president. Um, and so you have to know as a candidate, I have to know as a candidate, that I'm going to have to work with whoever it is. And by the way, it could end up being a Republican or it could end up being a different Democrat. You just don't know until you get there and the person is voted into office. Um, and so I would suggest that whoever you want as governor, they've got to be somebody who could work with anybody. And that somebody who <clears throat> comes in with a set of priorities, very well-defined priorities, and is running on those priorities so that when you get elected, you have the people behind you standing behind those priorities and running a kind of grassroots campaign. Remember, our campaign is unlike any campaign this year. We are running in 102 counties. We're not running in just Cook County and just the Collar counties. We're literally running in all counties. And, and there are Democrats everywhere, even though everybody likes to say, well, where are the Democrats downstate? There are lots of Democrats downstate. Um, they don't get counted sometimes because people think of them as, as like an electoral college system. You know, oh, that's a red county. That's a Republican county. Lots of Democrats. So I'm saying it because when you get elected, you've got to be able to bring that people power to, to the capital with you. 
and a set of priorities and a history of standing up as an independent thinker and independent leader. Now, in my case, there are lots of things that I disagree with the speaker about. Like, for example, I believe in leadership term limits. Um, I don't think somebody should serve as long as he has. Um, I believe in uh, independent maps. I think that we should, you know, follow the Constitution and, and the court rulings and make sure that our, um, that our districts that represent people of color are uh, sacrosanct. And then we have an opportunity to draw maps uh, that are competitive around the state. Um, so that people have choices when they go into, and I'm pretty sure the Speaker of the House doesn't agree with me about either one of those things. Um, but <clears throat> one thing I know when I go to Springfield as governor.